Hello and welcome to the second instalment of our interview with Star Trek's promoter Steve Rees. As you can tell, I'm at a stadium I thought we'd never see again in Formula 1 stock car racing. But here we are and today we're going to chat to Steve and a couple of other people about the world final and a lot more. Since we were last here, we've obviously now got the hospitality suites on turns three and four. And you know, looking at it, it, it just looks amazing. And I think really finishes the stadium off. Can't wait to get inside and have a look. What is an offer to you, the fans, if you join that? That 140 club. So we here we are at Bradford again with Ian Higgins looking at some of the amazing hospitality options that are available if you want to uh, purchase one of them. So Ian, we, uh, currently we're in what is going to be the 140 Club. Yeah, um, eventually, obviously, as we've said to the people that are joining, for the first meeting, the upstairs may not be open, um, but it definitely will be during the year. And this is going to be a very exclusive club, um, only ever 140 members. Yeah. Um, and obviously divided off from the rest of the facility. It's own bar, um, it's got excellent viewing out the front. Yeah. Um, again, another of the fundraisers, you know, it's uh, basically including the VAT, it's uh, two and a half grand and that's five years membership. So, yeah. and that's for every meeting, not just Formula One. So if you're an F2 fan or a banger fan or, or whatever, um, this won't be open for all of those, but you get reserved seating in the grandstand. Right, okay. But like you said, the the facility here, well, there's nothing else like it no. that, that we're currently racing at. You know, as much as Kings Lynn's got facilities and um, and that, this this is something special. Yeah. And the 140 Club is going to be special. Okay. And so, including the 140 Club, it's um, Formula One's in here. And do they get anything else in terms of meeting drivers, or is that kind of part of the plan? Part of the plan is um, working alongside yourselves. Yep. Um, BSC DATV will be uh, in the club. Um, so driver interviews will be able to see those. There'll be a meet and greet. We want drivers to come in here and meet the people. Um, there's a lot of things. They get an exclusive membership card, goodie badge, uh, goodie pack with fancy badge. and So there's a few little bits like that, but it goes further than that because they also get uh, discount admission off uh, at Sheffield. Um, so they get a discount there and also they get a discount with the Bradford Bulls for any home games. Yeah. So if you're local, rather than, I'm thinking rather than just a stock car fan, you know, if you are local and you support the Bulls, then you've got the best of both worlds. Yeah. I mean, I've seen uh, the stuff you've kind of put out on, on Facebook, sort of advertising the 140 Club, and I guess just being here personally, it's like, I can see why it's amazing and for the actual cost that it is it's it's a lot of money but actually for what you get it is very very good it is i mean um at the end of the day the i think steve has actually extended it where he will still let you buy them for two thousand pound that was on a it, that was going to be a restricted thing yeah. initially but it is and that includes the vat so if you're that registered company um it's even cheaper and if you buy more than one your second one is cheaper again yeah. so you know there's a few people have bought sort of four um but no the minute i walked in here and looked at it and i just knew that it could be something special but Without sounding horrible, stock cars, stock cars needs to move on. Um, as far as corporate stuff, you know, they all, people always say, "Oh, well, where do you take our sponsors? Where do we do yeah. it? Where do we do that?" Well, now they've got somewhere. Yeah. And for my mind, that was the first thing that started clicking, and that's why, you know. I'm not involved in Odsall in any way, shape or form, financially or anything else. I've been there as support for Steve and I've sort of come along with ideas for yeah. raising money, um, you know, through the paint scheme, through this sort of thing. Steve's focusing on getting it open. Yeah. I've sort of been focusing on the peripherals a little bit. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the 140 Club is, uh, you know, it's going to be an exclusive club and why not? Yeah, absolutely. I think, it, like you said, it's something that's very unique in stock car racing and you know, to be able to come to a stadium and sit in here and have, and have that view out, it's just absolutely, it's incredible. Oh, it is, it is, you know, and at the end of the day, we're fortunate that it, it lends itself yeah. to, to doing that for us, you know. Um, that, that, that's the big thing about here. The minute you look at this south stand and you just think, yeah, there, there is so much potential. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you, 
it might sound harsh or hard nosed you can't afford to just let that potential go you've got to use it you know um, so that that's what we're doing and obviously again it's all going back into the stadium yeah and obviously uh, a few places still available if people want to join yeah the 140 club there's still um, there's still places we say you know it's a big purchase yeah um, if anybody wants we, we can send them details etc but you know you can pay over a period um, in installments rather than just paying the one big lump sum but uh, you know it, it is a lot of money but it's a five-year commitment yeah. and at the end of the day you're looking at anywhere between 20 to 25 events a year you know um, at some point there'll be world finals here whether it be f1 whether it be f2 um, you know so all those are included in it so you know um, bonf there's a big fireworks spectacular and everything going on here you get free entry to that yeah. so you know it's a it's a five-year commitment that star tracks is giving back as well yeah brilliant cheers Ian. thank you for that no problem um so other than the 140 club there are some other great hospitality opportunities available here also and we're going to check out some of those now so stood on the balcony of the south stand in front of the corporate box seating and obviously behind you in the 140 club seating what an incredible view seriously it took my breath away up here well <laughs> it has mine jonathan and uh, you know i'm not a fan of uh, heights but uh, you know that view is just something yeah. else when, when you just imagine you know um some of those top boys coming off that corner yeah. foot down it's it is awesome yeah yeah and again you know you, you put the pictures on uh, the picture's been on uh, facebook but looking down you, you're actually literally looking on the top of the cars as they come past down here oh yeah very much so um we describe it as the best seats in the house yeah. and you know it definitely is cause, you know you'll be able to watch them coming in um, and going out and you know the beauty is you've got your own private box here so you can come in and out as you want yeah um, you know uh, if, if it's cold and blustery you can go in there you'll still see most of the track yeah um, but if it's a nice day you can be out here and uh, enjoy yeah. something else so come the sunshine yeah. so we're stood outside what is the uh, corporate box so that differentiates from the 140 club how what's the difference between the two? <laughs> the corporate box is there done on a uh, 12 month basis yep. basically um, and they are for the F1 meetings only okay and uh, they basically what it is it's four and a half thousand pound for the year and um, that gets you every meet every F1 meeting um, for 10 guests so uh, you've got 10 guests in here, complimentary tea and coffee, uh, complimentary race day programs, VIP entry and pit access until 10 minutes before the start of the meeting. Right, okay. Um, because the pits will be a safe zone uh, after that. Yeah. Um, so, but as I say, these are for a 12 month period only okay. and only for the Brisker F1 meetings. Right, brilliant. Okay, lovely. And thank you for that. And like I say, I'm just, I'm just gonna turn around a minute because I need to, I need to spend some time it's looking at this view. It's, it's brilliant, it's absolutely brilliant. Else, like you say, it's just, uh, well, it's unique yeah. because of the looking down aspect. You know, places like Hennesford and whatever, which are banked, but you're not on top of it. No. Literally like you are here. No. Ian, thank you very much. So we are on the ground floor of the South Sand. Another incredible view. But Ian, this, is, this room here is for people who sponsor a meeting. Yeah, this uh, room, again, separate to the rest. Um, but this is for the meeting sponsors, those that sponsor the final, the heat, um, etc. Yeah. Um, grade awards. So yeah, this, this room is specifically for meeting sponsors. Yeah. And again, they've got the balcony seating. Um, and this will be from day one. Um, as I say, with the rest of it, we've said that we've got to be a little bit flexible. We're moving things around. But from day one, this will be open and this will be the sponsors lounge. Okay. So those that have sponsored the first meeting, which is fully booked up, okay. which is very fortunate, this is where they'll be situated. Okay. And can you sponsor the whole meeting or is it just or, or bits of the meeting or is it it's an entire package? <laughs> it, the Star Trek's have got a various um, levels that you can come in at. Yeah. Um, you can sponsor the full meeting. Um, there's also then a final sponsor, heat sponsor. You can either sponsor all the grade awards or you can sponsor individual grade awards. Right, okay. um, and again, with stuff like that, if you're a member of the 140 Club, you get a discount rate on, uh, on yeah. the sponsorship. Um, but this room basically would be for a normal meeting sponsor. If there was a bigger group, you know, yeah. if you've got a, um, 
a big one where somebody wants to be the headline sponsor as well as your other sponsors then obviously with the flexibility of upstairs there's a room at the far end um, yeah. that we haven't shown today but very similar to this that you can open up and have people in there yeah so I think this just, just really kind of sums up how many great hospitality opportunities there are at Odsal and, and certainly something to capitalise on going forward. Oh, absolutely, you know, and what people have to understand is the priority has been to get the track, um, track and fence done, and everybody's done a great job there. This is now the sort of stage two almost, um, get this done, um, get some revenue coming in, um, get the upstairs done, and then hopefully, um, you know, what we want to do is move the 140 Club upstairs as we've shown you in the room there and then the ground floor will probably be a restaurant. Yeah. Um, again, it'll be a premium priced restaurant but you know we're talking maybe 12 months down the road so we can't offer anything like that yet, we've just got to wait and see. Yeah, and I think you have summed up quite nicely that this isn't perfect from day one, there is going to be a period of time to spend the money that comes in because you know there's so much to do here isn't there yeah you know there is um but like i said it is such a flexible building that the promises that we give you we we can live up to sort yeah. of thing um I'm, I'm more of a case of under promise and over deliver yeah. you know i don't like to be the other way around so you know at the end of the day your big thing is your view you'll be inside yeah. um, if it's a horrible day you've got nice facilities nice toilet you know every, everything's proper as, yeah. as, as it should be um but it won't be all the corporate boxes from day one, the 140 club upstairs from day one, the sponsors here, this, that, that. You know, it, it's a process. Yeah. Um, but, you know, obviously, the sooner we can do it, the better. And obviously, the Bulls as well, they, they want to use this facility as much as we do. So, um, if, if, if they end up, you know, once they end up coming back, they're as keen to get it done as us. But it, it is just time. Yeah. Time and money. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, from when we walked in and we walked around and I saw this building obviously wasn't here last time and it's yeah it's, it's this decent size and when you're actually in it it's a bloody huge thing it's, it's massive. massive it's huge you, do, you, you just don't realize no. it, you know and it's almost like a bit of a rabbit warren but yeah. you know where all the toilets are i mean there's kitchens at the back of there and everything you know yeah. fully fully equipped catering kitchens lazy um what is it those dumb waiters to take yeah. food upstairs so we're only seeing the front part of it yeah you've got the same again behind it so it although it looks big when you walk in as you say when you're actually in here it's massive yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But you like to say, great opportunities for the future. At the end of the day, you know, um, Odsal should become Bristol Formula One's premier stadium. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's getting there, and that's not taking anything away from the Kings, Lins, etc. Coventry's gone. You know, you need something, and me being fairly local, the talk. You know, it's the talk of the town. Yeah. Um, and old stock car fans, and you know, because my number and email have been put out there a little bit regarding advertising yeah. sponsorship. Oh, you're getting phone calls from everywhere. You know, people that you haven't spoke to for years, but yeah. they remember Bradford, and you know, they want to come back. And to be honest. For me, you know, I'm a local lad and this is how I got into stock cars, was through coming to Odsall because I, I live just down the road. So to me, it's just fantastic. Yeah. You know, I never, I, I never thought it'd happen again, um, you know, but it's here and it's definitely going to happen. Yeah, thank you. Ian, thanks for your time today. No problem. Um, great for you to show us around and um, look forward to seeing you back here in May. Yep, can't wait. Thank you. So one of the announcements we wanted to make today was around the Chase Series final where that will be held. Before we get to that, I spoke to David and Ben a couple of times last year around the Chase Series. They were instrumental in the fundraising. Um, we've got a bit more money raised since we last spoke, haven't we? Yeah, we have. So we're still just over 11 and a half grand, or sorry, 11,000, about 100 pounds now into NHS charities together. And they launched a nationwide campaign recognising Brisker and uh, BSCDA's efforts in that. Uh, and also we've paid out £1,000 into drivers' uh, grade awards for the Chase Series itself. Just an unfortunate we didn't get the King's Lend date, but yeah. so far. Yeah, but we're here in 2021 and we are going to talk about where the Chase final is going to be held. A big announcement, so I guess David, it's over to you. Take, take the glory. In well, of that. Uh, I know a lot of people have been asking about it and I do recognise that it was a, a one-off series to, to support
support the NHS and the, and the, and the key workers that did so much for us and are doing so much for us, uh, but were kindly supported by uh, Star Tracks and by BFCDA and Britsker F1. The chase finale will take place on Monday, May the 31st here at Oddsall Stadium, one of the first events in this prestigious stadium. So a, gr a great announcement and uh, I'm sure people will be pleased with that. Have you got any further details that you can add around what that's going to look like as, as, an, as an event? Yes, so originally we wanted to do a last chance qualifier, however with it being the opening event we can't quite do that. So it will be open to the top or the first 25 point scorers uh, from top down uh, in the chase series uh, and so in the BSCDA will take bookings on that uh, but we'll run as 25 is the big grace. Brilliant. So there you have it. First race on the calendar, uh, May the 31st at Bradford. So we stood on turns one and two at Bradford and behind me I've got some of the fantastic banners of companies that have supported the return to Oddsall. Uh, something that's been instrumental in supporting Steve is Ian. Ian Higgins, thank you very much for joining me. So yeah, they look brilliant, Ian. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's, uh, you know, all, all a bit of colour really. Um, obviously it, it's great that people have supported us, you know, um, every all the money that we're raising via these um, obviously goes back to do what you can sort of see here really yeah. you know um, people sort of coming for the first time don't realize just what a difference it is yeah. but you know it, it is massive and there's still a long way to go yeah so this the ones that are up that you can see today they're just the first print run that we've done um, several other spaces have sold um, both straights um, there's banners going up on both of the straights but it was too windy and cold this morning for me to put them up so uh, they'll, they'll be going up um, once we put them up then uh, as i say we have the two different ones down the straights are 250 pound and these ones are 300 pound but it's not just stock car people that have got involved which is brilliant yeah. you know there's a local nightclub and yeah. uh, so no it's really good no it did look as i was looking at a big variety of, of names up there so obviously i didn't recognize and is there more spaces available if people want to to get banners the the ones on the bend are running out there the three meter ones yeah. i think we've only got uh, five of those left um there's quite a few down the straights but my my sort of vision with it is you know steve's thing was we need a fence we need a track yeah. my thing is let's make it look nice yeah, yeah. you know and even just that little bit of color today has just made such a difference yeah. so you can imagine the whole place all down the straights all around the bend that's what we're after yeah it does look fantastic and in terms of if people kind of want to to have a banner what, what is the process for them doing that basically contact me via facebook email look on the star tracks facebook page um, all our contact details are on there um, we will either design them for you um, there's a small charge for that 30 pound or you can supply camera ready artwork yeah. um, but if you if you get in touch then you know and it, it's good a couple of the ones that we've got haven't got up today there's one for uh, everybody's good friend batty um, all his friends have chipped in and bought a p banner with a picture of him on so that yeah. he'll be at every meeting yeah. um, we've had a couple of charity ones so you know whatever it is you can uh, get in touch and we'll get your banner done. Cheers Ian, and, and, and thank you, and they do look brilliant and really add, add something to the stadium, so um, it's a great idea, thank you very much. Thank you. So here we are, I'm on the track at Bradford, um, beyond amazing to be stood here on turns one and two, chatting to you Steve, thank, thank you very much for the invite to come no up problem. today. Um, you know, we spoke last week around what you've been doing at the stadium, and it is just incredible, I mean, what a, what a transformation you've made um, since you've, you've been on site. We're still, if we knew what we had to do before we started, we wouldn't be talking today. No. Yeah, it's turned into a huge project, but it's coming together now. Yeah. Um, still a lot, lot to do. And it's probably done us a favor that the opening's gone back. Yeah. And we've still got a huge amount of work to do on the floodlights, uh, the track, we've done a cracking job in. There's about 1,800 tons in here. Yeah. We've let it settle, dry out week on Monday. We start grading it, there's another 300 tons Tons. The material, there's a sample of it on the back straight, it's gorgeous. <laughs> um, proper red. Yeah. Um, so still, you know, work, but it's getting more to routine work on here. We've yeah. let it dry out, we've let it settle. It's rock solid. Yeah. Um, we've got a lot more work to do around the stadium, finish painting, all the new gates are on, yeah. done landscaping. So we're, I would say we're probably 70% of what we've got to do. Yeah. Um, we've got another planning meeting on Monday where we, you know, that, the, the Bradford Bulls are renovating the touchdown bar. We've got work that we're continuing to do, sort of in the, getting the south stand ready. Yeah. 
Um, but what are we getting there? There's still a lot of hoops to jump through. Yeah, but I think for me, stood here, I mean, not really understanding what's got, how it's got to go on, it very much feels like a stock car track. It very much feels like, yeah, I can see stock cars racing around here tomorrow, you know. The first, uh, the first obvious bit that looked good when we started here on the 3rd of January, you have four different climates here in one day. <laughs> I mean, when I was here Tuesday, it was snowing. Yeah. Um, today we've got the sun, we've had rain this morning, yeah. we've got the wind. But um, first, first thing where you could see it was a stock car track, and I, I started thinking, shall I leave it tarmac? Okay. <laughs> Cliff, when we took the corners off, because you got the shape then. Yeah. Um, and look, the tarmac underneath it, it's a bit bumpy. Yeah. And it, it, it's weathered dang, but weathering dang helps wear the track. Yeah. Because it's not smooth. But I think once I took the corners off, I thought, am I doing the right thing here? Because to re tarmac, it wouldn't have been a great deal of difference to what, you know, there's 50 grams with a share on here, yeah. we haven't finished yet. But uh, shale's where it is. I'm a yeah. shale man. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it is taking shape. I mean, nothing, despite what people think, uh, for 20 years you keep answering them, the dimensions of the track are identical okay. um, to, um, to, to, to how they were before. I mean, people, oh, you'll ever build it, there's a stand on the corner, but it was always built to go around the track. Yeah. So nothing has altered in the geometry. What I, what I have noticed, which I never noticed when I was here before, was that bend is more banked than this one. So tell me about that, Steve. I'm, I'm stood here, my, my right leg's aching, because it is on quite a tilt, this, this bend. It is. Um, I mean, when we, when we started working, bear in mind I ran it before, didn't actually notice till we started measuring everything up in the because you'll see the fence rises as well on the bends. Just how 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 much banking there is on it because yeah. we were replacing the old fence has been taken. And ironically, that bend is a bit steeper yeah. than this one. I mean, it answers a lot. We, over the 20 years, we've all read the comments: stock cars can't come back here or speedway because the stands on the track. And yeah. the answer is not, and nothing's changed in the track. The geometry, the size, the original curbing that you yeah. see is what was there before. I mean, it started to take shape on the 4th of January. It looked a trap when we took the corners up. Yeah. And then that started me thinking, it looks good, this looks like a cliff <laughs> with a tarmac, you know, a bit bumpy, good racing. Yeah. Could I say 50 grand on plus on shale, but shale's where it's at. Yes. Um, you know, so far there's about 1,800, 2,000 tonnes gone on. We've left it, let it settle and dry and it's rock solid. And then uh, a week on Monday, we have another 300 tonne of material coming in, which is really nice stuff. There's a sample of it over there. So it'll be graded, watered. This will be graded before we start and then add in, add in the finishing touch of 300 yeah. tonne of shale. But uh, it's not quite like Daytona, where it's 55 <laughs> degrees, but uh, it, you know, the, the, but the banking is what makes the racing. Yes, absolutely. And I think with the fact that it is shale, that it's, it's that what's generating interest, isn't it? You know, the fact yeah. that you've got a, a, a northern shale track. I mean, I think you've got to look, there is a difference as well between, because we're not just just running Formula 1s here, we're yeah. running bangers and, and what have you. Um, bangers, if, 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 if we had this as a tarmac track, we'd have 10 grand bangers here, yeah. you know, because the lads do spend a lot of money on them, yeah. you know, six and a half thousand pound race engines. The North hasn't got that sort of uh, free cash to spend, and we want it to be fun, and we're, you know, for all the formulas. Formula 2s, you know, they're epic on shale. Yeah. You know, you, you know I can't fault Formula 2s and the supporters promotion we've had over the years. They're going to be brilliant round here. So we've sort of, I think we've made the right decision. Yeah. Because um, it, it would be, it would save us not only 50,000 pound in uh, the shale, or 60,000 when it's finished, but it would save us 2,000 pound a meeting yeah. in redo, you know, regrading the track, more shale to top it up, watering, etc., etc., and cleaning the place down because we've got to wash this fence down every meeting and then repaint it a few days later yeah. so it looks like this, yeah. you know, when, when we're finished. So, but I mean, it's the right decision. Yeah, absolutely. And it must be great to kind of look over your shoulder and see some stock cars on track. Yeah, because I've never been up here when the rug is on to see yeah. them, but it was just listening to Lee fire up yeah. <laughs> coming down there. Um, having been starved myself of any revenue virtually <laughs> being able to run a meeting. I mean, this is the first race meeting, really, or the first time I've had some cars on track yeah. in my presence since September last year. Yes. So it did start the hours rising yeah, a little absolutely. bit. And, uh, but there's so much work gone in, team effort. I mean, Pete Folding, um, Graham Robson, 
uh, Frank, old Frank, you know, we all met here and the structural uh, um, demolition company, yeah. Scott Newton, and um, we've sort of tried to build a fence that drivers want. Yeah. Um, with a little bit of giving it, it's probably over engineered it was eight millimeter plate previously it's a 10 millimeter plate now i mean frank uh, frank jr and team uh did the job for us you know we employed them to to put the fence in old frank's been here with danny putting the ropes in and we're very good environmentally we've recycled lots okay. of it the <laughs> rope has come from bellevue the gates have come from bellevue so we're very good in the recycling business yeah. as well yeah. so we think you know the fence if you, you can have a good look at it yourself yeah um but you know having been a driver i didn't want it solid yeah uh, so we've designed so it's got a bit of giving it that's yeah. the hope yeah i'm sure people appreciate that steve thank you very much for for coming uh, down on track and talking to me it, it does look incredible and we'll now talk to you about the big announcement of the day which is where the world final is going to be held yeah so after speaking last week, one of the biggest announcements we need to make today is around the venue for the 2021 World Final. So we're in a place now where we can do that, Steve, aren't we? Yeah. Um, we wanted to make it last week. Um, if you want the real reason, even up to, if I like this morning, I mean, this is the hardest decision that I've yeah. made in 27 years, because I understand the support we've had from people over the last year. Um, and with everything taken into account, we ha you, know, you can't make an omelette without breaking eggs. But it became after consulting with our colleagues in Holland, with drivers, and obviously the work that's gone into here, and we, dis we have made the final decision, it's been agonising, um, that we will stage the World Final here. We think uh, it will upset people, we understand that. Um, we will announce procedures for people who may want to refund if they can't make it. Um, all those details will go on the website during the next week to start on the 19th of April. Um, but we will look after the customers as much as we can that have supported us yeah. um, in terms of most of the people that have bought tickets, the grandstand tickets anyway. Uh, we've got 5,250 seats here yeah. and we've already put a plan into place that those who've, that have got seats will get a priority to get the best seats here. Um, it won't suit everybody, but if you look, we've sold about 500. Yeah. Um, compared to a well fine audience, I don't know, seven or 8,000. Uh, um, it's the bigger picture. Yes. Um, and I think the other thing is my wife as well. Yeah. You know, we, we've opened this, um, but we're at 62. The plan is not to be here for another six years to leave something behind. And as you know, with the rotors of World Finals, it probably couldn't be here for another six years, yeah. only 68. So I think in the big picture for us as well, we want, we want to run it here. Yeah. But I can't tell you how many sleepless nights it's given off yeah. the last uh, sort of number of weeks whilst we've been thinking about it. Yeah. And there's been lots of other factors is um, we want to make sure things are right for parking. Yeah. Uh, we've got a plan, we're working with the council, uh, for motorhome parking, extra space which we'll reveal as the year unfolds uh, for like park and ride and, 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 and stuff. So we want to make it right, yeah. but it's got fantastic facilities. Yeah. Um, and I think this will this will be, as a promoter, my yeah. last one. Yes. Um, so, in the end of the day, I think, you know, we haven't made the right decision yeah. in the best uh, interest of everybody. Yeah. You mentioned uh, last week sort of consulting with, with Holland. Are they quite keen to come to Bradford as well? Yes, I've been consulting mainly with Henry, yeah. you know, sort of quite frequently. And, um, you know, the Dutch are very much up for it. I mean, they are working separately on travel arrangements over there. You know, they're, they're quite advanced on, on working with that. But on the Friday night, we've come up with a plan A and plan B in terms of qualification, how it may work in Holland, that's something we're going to see yeah. run through. But the show we're putting together on the Friday night will include overseas Formula Ones um, and National Saloon Stock Cars, yeah. which will be their only appearance here this year. And then Saturday, obviously, is full Formula One. Yeah. But, you know, I'm very, very encouraged talking to Sophie. Uh, without revealing too much information, how many Formula Ones are already booked in for the 31st yeah, yeah. of May? Right. It's, it's not a figure I would have expected. <laughs> um, so I think there's a lot of anticipation, and it's one of those, you know, I dread reading social media on Monday. Yes. Because we're going to get crucified by some. Um, but we've considered that. But 
you've got to set that aside and we will disappoint some people and I yeah. respect and understand that and we haven't done it deliberately to sort of punish everybody we've tried to agonize over it for a number of weeks to an all round what should be the right decision yeah it won't please everybody and to those that it does affect you know we may and Jackie do apologize but I think from a from a fan's perspective I'm sure people would appreciate you know the time you're spending to explain to, 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 to fans why you've made the decision and and what they then need to do to exchange tickets etc it's not just something you've decided overnight and, and stood here on the track today I mean what an amphitheater it is to showcase the biggest race for the sport we haven't done it it's hard for people to believe this uh, and it has been a lot of sleepless nights because it would have been easy just so we leave it at King's Lake. Yeah. Um, but it's not our venue. Um, so it has sleepless nights even up to this morning driving here. Are we doing the right thing? Yeah. And I got, you know, I do, you know, the people that have supported us who bought tickets, I can't overstress that. Yeah. But in the end of the day, it's an amphitheatre. Yeah. Um, it isn't entirely commercial. Um, you've got to look at the other aspect of it that uh, when you see the number of drivers that are registering in Formula One, yeah. Formula Two, is astronomic. It's going to wake up the North. Yeah. Um, you know, it's perhaps my time to rejuvenate the North. Yeah. You know, what my legacy is, is to leave here, which has got a secure lease on it for, for a number of years, and Sheffield, and regenerate the North, and um, Northern Powerhouse. Yeah. And this will be my only opportunity to, to run the world final in, in, in my lifetime here. So those are the big sparse factors. It's not just the commercial factor, because yeah. we'll probably get the same crowd here as we probably get at Kingsling. Uh, we, we have got, obviously, a lot bigger facility choice. Yeah. Um, so I think you know we have made the right decision yeah. on every on the big picture. Yeah, no, thanks for that, Stephen. In terms of details for people who want to sort of buy tickets to come here or to change their tickets, that's going on the website. That will be going on next week to come in, you know, because give us some breathing space because yeah. it, it's a tough decision. There's still a lot to go on here. There's full scat pages of work to, to do. I'm here all day Monday again in, in progress meetings. So we're going to announce stuff next week to kick in from the 19th yeah. of. Monday the 19th of April. We'll tell people if they do want to return their tickets how to do that. If people already got tickets and they've got a grandstand ticket, you, do, you need to do no more. Yeah. You just keep them and you use them here. Yeah. Um, but if they want to contact us, preferably by email, because we do get a lot of phone calls and we can answer them. But we will explain it all during the course of next week yeah. to sort of go live with it and the tickets will go on sale from the 19th of April. Brilliant. OK, thank you very much. So there you have it. There's all the details. Keep your eyes on social media, uh, particularly the Star Trek's page, where you can see all the details that you need for the 2021 World Final, which will be held at Bradford. So here we are on track with number nine, Harley Thackeray. Harley, is this the first time you've ever been to Bradford? Yeah, this is the first time I've ever been here. My dad's been here before. He used to uh, work here back when it was open, but this is the first time I've been here. So what's your thoughts? It's brilliant. It's a big ball. Looks nice and fast. Yeah. I just can't wait to race. It, it, it is. And, and the bends, I was saying to Steve uh, a minute ago, really banked. Do you think that'll help you when you're racing? Yeah, it'll be somewhat different. Yeah, King's End's very banked okay. for us, but... This is a bit more banked, we'll see how much run we can get off the bend, see if yeah. it makes it any faster. So I think the Formula 2's have got um, five meetings here in 2021, are you planning to race all of them? Yeah, I'll be at, I think we're going to try and do all of them, the most that we can, yeah. depending on what else is on and where else we have to go. So what are your plans, because obviously second season uh, in Formula 2's, what are your plans this year? Have you got any goals, aspirations, targets? Uh, we'll just try to do as much meetings as we can, see if we can try to win a championship, a small one or something. Try and make it into the world final for Give the first time. Give it to a big time. one. Give it a big championship. <laughs> Don't set yourself small. Go big. No, I'll try my best. <laughs> it's great talking today, and thank you for coming along. Uh, it's been brilliant. Thank, thank you. you. So at Bradford with the mini stocks driver 64 Sam Critchley. Sam, thank you very much for doing this. No problem. This has become a bit like your second home because your dad's heavily involved in getting also back up and running, isn't he? Uh, yeah. Well, he's just been he's been doing the health and safety around and stuff. So I've just been helping out, coming with him every Saturday. <laughs> What's your thoughts of the stadium? Uh, I think it looks really good from where it's come from, like the fence and the track. I would have preferred it to be tarmac, but you know. Really? <laughs> yeah, because I just think it's faster and I like it faster. <laughs> Did you tell Steve that when he was deciding whether it should be shell or tarmac? Were you involved in that high-powered meeting? Uh, I weren't uh, that involved, no. <laughs> <laughs> so you're coming into your third season in minis, so yeah. have you set yourself any kind of goals, targets for the season? Well, um, I got like on the fourth row in the world final last year, but um, 
got sent over I got sent on the centre green for I don't really know what reason but so I was like I'm hoping this year that I can get on the world final grid again and get a bit close to the front and yeah. have a shot at it. And you're looking forward to doing? Are you looking to do most of the meetings? Uh, yeah, we do as many as we can. But like, if it's if there's like engine problems or we need, or I've got damage on the car, then it just depends on that, doesn't it? Yeah. Is, is that a new car this year, or is it one you, um, you built over the winter? Well, my dad built it. I think it was about two years ago now. So you know, we've just refurbed it. But we may be looking at a new car for maybe next season. Okay. Well, as long as Steve pays him lots of money for helping out at Bradford, you'd be all right, wouldn't you? No comment. <laughs> Sam, thank you always for talking to me. No and problem. good luck for 2021. Cheers. So at Bradford with V8 driver and my 525, Amy Jagger. Amy, thank you so much for doing this. It's OK. So in terms of Bradford, you're, you look very young. You've never been here before. <laughs> never been. I've uh, done the demonstrations that Paul Greenwood put on, yeah. but never raced. Okay. Looking so, forward to it, clearly. 100%, yeah. It's, it's one of them things that when I heard that it was coming back, it was just instant thing of I'm going to be able to race at the same track that my granddad used to race at, yeah. sort of thing. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So, you, your dad raced Formula One but never raced here, but your granddad did, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. So, you can't get any tips off your dad at all, no? Probably not, no. no good. <laughs> so, so, you're going into your seventh season, seventh season or eighth season? Uh, seventh. Seventh, yeah. In, in V8s. Um, I saw on social media this car was brand new last year. Yep. And then you broke it. Yeah. Um, we had a, an episode at Buxton where I climbed over Guy Jolly yeah. and then I did it again at Skegness last meeting last year. I uh, climbed over Dickie Percy. Okay. So it wasn't the best. So were you thinking the winter's coming up, we're going to be quite bored, I'll oh, just do something to give us a bit more work? <laughs> no? I'm sure my dad thinks of it like that, yeah. but he seems to think that I've just got a magnet and I'm attracted to the fence, but I didn't think I was that bad. No, no. <laughs> um, so, so hopefully no crashing in 2021. So what are your goals and aspirations for the coming season? We've, uh, we've already said that we'd like to get a bit of bling on it. Yeah. So I would like to try and get up the grades a bit more. Um, hopefully if, if we don't do that then stay at blue yeah. um maybe even have a bit of a race win yeah We've got every every faith in myself this year so i mean the car is looking fantastic to be fair it looks looks really good on <laughs> bradford's shale yeah it's uh it complements the the color of the shale a bit doesn't yeah. it <laughs> 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 Amy, thanks so much for, for chatting to me today. Been brilliant. And good luck for 2021. Thank, Thank you, you very much. So at Bradford with Formula 1 driver Lee Fairhurst. Lee, you've kind of got the accolade of being one of the first Formula 1s on the Shell track at Bradford in 20 odd years. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah. It uh, just looks nice sitting here, doesn't it? But yeah, it does. hopefully it won't be too long before we can be racing it round in anger. What's your, what's your thoughts of the bends? They're, they're very banked. Yeah, brilliant. They're nice and wide, banked. It should promote some really good uh, racing. Um, so yeah, hopefully. Obviously we've watched tons of videos of years gone by of the racing, so if you can get more of the same, it'll be excellent for the drivers and the crowd. It is an amazing stadium, it's like a proper amphitheatre, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, just seeing it all with a plate fence paid and the track down, it gives you goosebumps. I don't have goosebumps because I've not seen you for a while, or, yeah. <laughs> or just the arena of the track, but yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's brilliant, so it's credit to Star Tracks and the team, yeah. really but, gone to town on it, so good, yeah. Well, so if you said that when you, she rang you to ask you to come today, you said it's only if Jonathan's going, so I had to... I had to I said, yeah, I said, uh, like I told you earlier, me 10-month-old, uh, he recognises you more well than his own grandparents, <laughs> so, so I think when he sees you later, he might come up and give you a hug. So. Okay, I'm looking forward to that, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, just, just quickly about your car before we go and sit down and talk a bit more, uh, what have you done to it over the winter? Um, it's been, it was ready last year to be honest and yeah. uh, we just made the decision to be ready for this year because it's the first time in a long while we've had two cars ready to go at the start of the season so we made that decision, raced Wes's cars last year which I was grateful for and yeah. gives me a chance in the chase series and yeah, hopefully we can hit the ground running with this car this year and just add a bit of a tidy up and a paint job and away you go. So is the plan to be at Kings Inn on the 22nd? Yeah definitely, definitely yeah. Good. Hopefully do as many as we can. Uh, up until we, we can obviously many, many as we can afford yeah and um yeah we'll just give it a good go perfect cheers, cheers thank you